with the Word of God this morning. It, uh, as you notice, the weather hasn't been good for a few days. And uh, I think originally Brother Moore was planning to be here. Of course, the Lord knows where everybody's going to be at every time, doesn't He? And uh, he was in Michigan on uh, Thursday night, said that went really well. I guess everybody was here Friday heard that that, that went good. And, uh, of course, from Michigan to here the next day wasn't that great. Apparently it's nice in Florida. I don't know. <laughs> I like it here just fine. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's pray before we look at the Word. Father, we do thank you for your Word. We know that it's full of your goodness. We know that it's full of your love, Lord. And we, by faith, open our hearts and our minds to receive from your goodness right now. We pray that it be the very words of God and not the words of man, that it would be you that speaks to us and we would hear it and receive it and that it would change our lives from this day forward. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Word of God is good, isn't it? Let's open up to James. James 1. Everybody says, Dave, how are you going to teach on love out of James 1? Guarantee you there's a way. If the word God is in it, then the word love is in it. But we're going to look at something from a little different place. We started Wednesday night, actually, talking about wisdom. And God continued me talking about wisdom, or studying wisdom, and uh, now I know why, because I was going to be preaching today. See, I didn't know that on Wednesday, but uh, God always has a plan. He's a smart, smart God, isn't he? Way smarter than me. Thank God. <laughs> James 1, starting in verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. How many people like to be tempted? No, nobody? But it says count it joy when you are. I guess God knew you were going to, right? So he had it just written in there, just count it joy. Because I've already made a plan against it, and when you come out, you'll be stronger than you were before you went in. He's not saying that he made the temptation. In fact, is as, you, as we read this, we'll find out that you don't even accuse God of tempting you. Right? Paul called being sick and being infirmed temptation in Galatians. He said, my temptation was in the flesh, right? So sickness is a temptation. What's a temptation? Temptation to be sick, to quit. Right? It's a temptation. It's a, but, but God has made a way of escape in every temptation. There's not one temptation that can come against us that there's not already a weapon against it that's already in place. So we don't, we don't have to be afraid of temptation uh, because guess what? It's, it's going to happen. You, you were probably tempted this morning. Right? Yeah. You know why? Because you got flesh and I got flesh. If we didn't have flesh, these other things wouldn't be a temptation. Right? right? right. Or if you didn't like it, like broccoli. I, it's, I've never been tempted by broccoli. <laughs> I've never walked by a plate of broccoli and said, ooh, that looks good, but I better not. <laughs> you know, just, it just hasn't been, you know, on the other hand, throw some chocolate chip cookies out there. And sometimes I count it all joy. <laughs> and I fall into that temptation. <laughs> Glory to God. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith. So in other words, temptations, all they are is trying your faith. Right? They're not, they're not something brought on by God. Right. Knock you down so you can look up. Come on. <laughs> I still can't stand that whole statement. God knocked me down so I could look up. He probably is smart. He's probably good enough. God, he'd just ask you to look up. He wouldn't even knock you down. It'd be like taking your kid and say, you don't look up enough, knock you down, put my foot on your chest and bruise you a little bit. You get put in jail for stuff like that. <laughs> right? But yet they accuse God of it all the time or employing the devil to do it for him. Now, I tell you what, it's going to be a pretty sad day when God needs the devil to teach you something. Especially since the devil don't know anything. So how's he going to teach you something? That ain't, that ain't our God, is it? 
we serve a good God. Amen. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Everybody, everybody gets in faith because they want the answer out, right? This says the trying of your faith works patience. Doesn't say you immediately get out, does it? <laughs> works patience. Yeah. Trying of your faith takes you to another level. What, 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 kind of, what is patience? Cheerful, hopeful endurance. Cheerful, hopeful endurance. That's what patience is. Patience isn't... That's anti-patience. Unpatience. What is it? Impatience. Okay. I like anti and un. Works better for me. That's not patience. How about that? Patience knows it already has what faith is believing. Amen? So it, it's, all, it's waiting for it patiently. Why? Because it it's going to get it. You know, God said, yeah, that's yours. Patience knows you're going to get it, so patience will wait forever. Why? Because it's mine. Right? There's never going to be a day where patience runs out because patience can't run out because it's hopeful, cheerful endurance. It's an eternal gift out of the love of God. Therefore, true patience always receives what faith believes. Amen? What did he tell us to do? Follow those by faith and patience inherited. Right? Notice he didn't say follow those who quit. Because you can't follow them because they quit. It's impossible to follow somebody who quit because they stopped. You're going to run into them at some point. God said follow those who inherited. Follow those who won victory. Follow those who were tempted and by faith and patience overcame. Glory to God. So patience, we want it to have its perfect work. What's he saying? Let it, let it, let it sit there as long as it wants to. Right? In other words, don't come up with your own idea. Because the next thing that happens when we run out of patience is what? Your idea. And that's not faith. It's your idea. Your plan. What, what, what can we do? I, I know that bill's due, and I know the Lord said what Brother Rick said just this morning. He's my shepherd, and I shall not want. But the bill's due. What am I going to do? And the next thing you know, patience is over here still waiting. Patience? Patience will do what you let her do. But all of a sudden, you've, you've let her go, and now it's your plan. Pull out the credit card. Call the bank. What are, what are you going to Call everybody else. You know, many times... No, we're not going to go with that one. Never mind. <laughs> you know, that was, a bad, that was a bad example, and I'm not going to give it. <laughs> God helps us, doesn't He? Yes, Amen. <laughs> There's some things you could say, but it wouldn't help anybody. If you, definitely if you can't say it with love, but if, it, if God says don't say it, be guaranteed it's not going to help anybody. How many know your idea and God's ideas are not the same? Right? Patience has its work because it'll wait. It'll wait to get God's answer. Our, our flesh will not wait for God's answer. Our flesh will try to make its own way. It'll try to see its own way. It'll do things that will not get a faith answer. Amen? And what we want is a faith answer, right? It said, let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Why, why does he say that? Because God's answer is perfect. God's answer not only helps you at the moment, it helps you three weeks later and helps you three years later and helps you 30 years later. God's answer, you know, it's like we get in a maze. And if you're inside the maze, anybody ever been in like one of those corn mazes or anything? Oh, wow. we got to get you guys out and about. Yeah. Got any youth in here ever been in a corn maze? It's a fun time, actually. You should do it. It's kind of, kind of a good time. <laughs> but if you get in that, you, and you can't see the way, what you do is you try every place because you can't see the way. And so you hit dead ends. And you hit places that you shouldn't be. You go to, you know, in the, if it's at the right time of year, they'll have things in there that you don't want to see. You think, right, because right, they normally do them in the fall, right? And so maybe they'll put something there that scares you. But needless to say, what's happening is you're going every direction testing to try to find out which way to go when there is one way in and out of that maze. 
And see, that's what we forget about God. When we ask Him for something, He's looking here. And He already knows the way. He knows what roads not to turn on. He knows what directions not to go. And He knows exactly how to get you there. Right? When you look at a maze on a piece of paper, if you just take your pencil and start trying things, you're going to have lines all over that thing. But if you look at it for a minute, you'll see that there's one way in and one way out. And then you'll draw your line there. God's already drawn your line. And doesn't matter what temptations when you come up to this one and you say, should I go there? No, you don't go there. Why? Because God has a plan. And as we're listening to Him, we'll go the direction He says to go. But when, but when we decide to, to listen to ourselves, you get there and say, God says, go straight. And you go, ooh, but that looks pretty good over there. You know, I saw one guy go right, and he looked pretty happy when he came out of there. Maybe I should go right. And God said, go straight. He said, well, but what left looks good too. There's a left and a right. Why should I go straight? Double-minded. There's one way. Right? There's one way. You know, that's the, what the world's trying to do. They're trying to tell people that there's more than one way to God. That is devilish wisdom. And they're confusing people, and, and they're, it's not a good thing, right? There's, God has one way, and it's, n it's not a bad way. Yes, it is a narrow way. Why? Because He doesn't want you bumping all the walls all the way in. Right. People say, He's just narrow and me. No, he's, he's narrow and love. He makes your path to where you can just walk on it so you don't have to worry about wobbling and wavering. How many know if your path was really narrow, you wouldn't be going like this all the time? Right? You'd have to go like this. Amen? God doesn't do anything for a bad reason. It's like Brother Rick said this morning. He's trying to get people in heaven. The narrow path is the easiest way. People say, well, narrow paths aren't easy. Yes, they are. They're real easy. There's only one place to walk. That makes it real simple. He's not trying to get people out. He's trying to get them in. And He has one way of doing it. And it's godly love. It's godly wisdom. So he says, let patience have a perfect work. Don't take off to the right or the left. Go the direction God has for you. Amen? You guys like that? I kind of like that. I just saw it this morning. It's really good. Just now. You guys think I get this stuff overnight and then have it this morning? No. I get it right now. I just put a verse on a piece of paper and God says, look at that. I go, whoa. Wow. Hey. Yeah. That's good stuff. Makes me happy. Thank you, Lord. You'll be perfect and entire. What is he saying? Whole. In other words, I'm not just going to fix the moment. You know, we go out and we get a credit card and fix the moment when he wanted to give you the cash to fix it forever. Yes, yes, yes. Amen? Yes. We don't want to fix the moment. We, your flesh wants momentary fixes. Ooh, I like that. Let me get that. God says, don't get that. Don't get that. Wait, I got something better. Oh, but I want that. I want that. No. Let patience have her perfect work. And you'll be perfect and entire, wanting how much? That's, that's God's plan. You ever notice when you fulfill your own plan, you come out unsatisfied? You were satisfied for the day, right? But you weren't satisfied forever. God satisfies forever. That's what He meant when He told the woman at the well. He said, the water, if you drink this water... You'll never thirst again. What's he saying? I'll satisfy you forever. If you keep drinking over here, you're going to have to drink forever and ever and ever. He says, if you'll drink for me, you'll never get thirsty again. God's got a good plan. And it's a one-way wisdom. His wisdom is one way. What's the very next verse say? It says right after, he says, have patience, let her have a perfect work. Then all of a sudden he says, and if, you lack, if any lack wisdom, what's that got to do with faith and patience? If any lack wisdom, God, we were talking about faith and patience. God must have got off track right here, right? Yeah. No. Wisdom is the answer for temptation. What do you need when you're being tempted? What did Jesus need in the wilderness when he was being tempted? Wisdom. Wisdom. The Word of God is wisdom. Right? But it also, it's not just the Word He had, it was the Word He had in season. It's not just that you have the Word, it's that you have the Word at the moment it's needed and how it's needed. 
It's, wisdom is more than having something. It's knowing how to use it. Right? And when to use it. You got people popping off Bible verses all day long, and if you ask them what they mean, they, I don't know, but it's a Bible verse and it's good. <laughs> and the people are saying, well, I don't understand and you didn't help me. That's right. That's right? But a word spoken in season, we talked about this a few weeks ago, a word spoken in season is a word of wisdom that will change a person's life forever. Amen? Amen? And God has a, has, has a wisdom. He doesn't have many wisdoms. He has wisdom. Right? And it's not many ways. It's one way. And He says, if any of you lack wisdom, wisdom, well, if any of you lack it, if you're in the maze, and you're saying, which way do I go? What's He saying do? Ask. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you just really got to study, and I got to get some wisdom. And yeah, you do need to study, but ask. That's what God said to do. He said, ask. That's right. You know, what, what, what God said to do for most everything He wants for you is ask. And you got people saying, well, you got to go to church. You got to do this. You got to do... Ask is what He said to do. Ask. Right? He said, if you ask anything according to my will, it'll be done unto you. Right? He said, ask. He says, if you want something, you ask for it. <laughs> You know, it's like when your kid th doesn't think you'll give them something. You ever, <laughs> you guys ever, anybody got kids? And, and they don't think you'll give it to them, so they come up with this elaborate scheme to talk you out of what they want <laughs> instead of just asking. And because they went with the elaborate scheme, you give them nothing <laughs> because you would have given it to them had they just asked. But in other, in, instead they tried to con you, you know, <laughs> that's what some people think about God they think, well there's a path to wisdom yes there is ask there's the path right there he says ask and he not only does he say that he says let him ask of God who gives to how many all all, all? even the people who haven't been nice huh it's, pro it's probably just in there, you know, like not in real writing, it's in like the back of God's mind that you wouldn't be good, then you wouldn't ask for, you know, so you wouldn't get wisdom, right? Or you didn't tithe. You know what? Probably those people that don't read their chapter. <laughs> yeah, there's a real good chance, no wisdom for them this week. <laughs> Pretty much he says all. Yeah. All. all. All what? All who ask. All who ask. He says, I give to all men. And not only does he give, he gives more than you need. Right. People say, well, that doesn't sound very narrow. It's real narrow. It's real narrow. People say, well, no. He says he'll just give it to anybody who asks. Yep. He does. He says it shall be given to him. But then the, the, the chapter didn't stop and the book didn't stop, did it? Nope. It said, but what? Let him ask in faith. Why, you know, it's like, it's like he just threw these verses in there and then went back to faith. What, what? Let him ask what? Ask for wisdom in faith. You know, a lot of people, they say, well, yeah, you got to ask in faith. And he's, he's specifically saying, let him ask for wisdom in faith. Is that not what this passage is about? He said, let him ask, and then said, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Why? Because you're getting ready to get some godly wisdom. And if you don't ask in faith, you ain't going to take it. Because you can't march on a wall and shout and make it come down. You can't kill a giant with a stone and a slingshot. You can't defeat whole armies with a jar breaking it and shouting. You can't get rid of leprosy dipping seven times in a nasty river. Why do you need faith to ask for godly wisdom? Because you're getting ready to get one of those answers right there. That's the answers you're going to get. How many people have ever said, God, you know, I'm believing you for some finances. I'm asking you for help in this area, you know, finances for this specific need. And God says, you do need that. Go out and give wit $100. No, God, you probably didn't hear me. I said, I'm out of money. And I need money, not wit needs money. I said, I, I need and I'm asking you. 
And he says, sure you do. He said, go out and give Whit $100. And you're like, hmm. That's, that, that's, you, you feel just like Naaman right then. <laughs> Dip in the river what? Dirty river seven times? What are you talking about, God? That's not how you get rid of leprosy. And God says, I got one wisdom. And he said, I said, ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Why? Wavering is another idea. Wavering is, is an opposing idea to God's idea. And guess what? God's idea isn't an idea. It's not, it's not something you're trying. It's something that will work Amen. if it's used. Your idea is a trial, <laughs> which is a good way to put it because you're getting ready to have one. <laughs> How do I know? The Bible tells me so. <laughs> I've done it. My way caused me trials, right? God's way brings me through the trials. And you know what? It doesn't matter if there's fire and it doesn't matter if there's flood. I'm not burned and I'm not overtaken. Why? Because with every temptation, He makes a way of escape. Remember, this whole verse started out talking about temptations. Why do you need wisdom? Because you're going to be tempted. And you'll be tempted and there will be more than one way out. But God only has one way. And so he's telling you in this passage how to overcome it, how to come through it. And he's saying, first of all, <laughs> count it all joy. Why? Because you win. It doesn't matter if somebody says, oh, man, you've got to play five games in four days. And you say, well, it ain't a big deal because I already won. They'll go, no, you actually have to win. No, I already won. Right. So I'm just playing to win, not to see if I win. Right? We're not playing to win. We're playing, or to see if we win, we're playing because we win. Right? There's not one loser in here. This, this is a church full of victorious winners. Because God doesn't have any losers. I mean, think about this. If you missed it all, and the worst thing ever happened, according to the world, and you died, what, what happens? Oh no! I go to be with Jesus in heaven where there's no sorrows and no tears? Amen. Glory to God. God's got a plan for your failures. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Plan for my failures. He planned in advance for my failures and gave me victory over everything. Does that mean that I should just go ahead and fail? No. No, that would frustrate the grace of God. He gave me the grace to not fail. So I want to use His grace every day to not fail. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He said, let him ask in faith. Let him ask for wisdom in faith <clears throat> who gives to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Oh, wait a second. I, I read two verses in the same time, didn't I? He said, let him ask, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man... That's a backwards verse. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. People say, yeah, that man that's not in faith, he won't receive anything. Why? Is God being mean saying, hey, you're not getting nothing? No, God's saying, I can't get it to you. I can't get it to you. Why? Because you're double-minded. You're looking at too many directions, and I've, got, and I've got one. And how many know your flesh wants the easy way out? It doesn't want the faith and patience way. Because why? This one fixes it right now. I don't have to think about it anymore. <laughs> right? Well, you guys probably don't mind. If you faith and patience. You know, I, I'm one of those guys that will eat McDonald's whether I want it or not just because it's fast. <laughs> right? Nobody else is like that in here. <laughs> what do you want to eat today? I don't know. Just stop here. Of course, you notice I never picked the fre garden fresh or salad places. <laughs> They're not fast. You've got to have a fork and a plate and dressing, and it's messy when you try to eat it in your truck. And 
How many know you can eat a Big Mac driving down the road with no problem, reach in, grab some fries, and take a drink just like that? <laughs> God's got a better way. <laughs> let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. In other words, don't let, don't let other ideas, don't let other plans keep the narrow way. You know, people think keeping the narrow way is not sinning. Keeping the narrow way will keep you from sinning. You know, people think, well, yeah, if I don't sin and I don't do this wrong and I don't drink and I don't cuss and I don't chew and I don't go out with girls who do. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you're like, that's the narrow path is to help you do that. <laughs> right? None of you guys do that, right? Kim never chewed, or I would have never married her, okay? <laughs> Glory to God. The narrow path is the path of wisdom. It's the path that keeps you from these other things. Why? Because it gives you better options. It gives you better options. What, what are the better options? The better options are having people follow you, pulling people out of the fire, pulling people out of the flood, helping people by your living right. Right? You're not living right to get into heaven. You're already in heaven. Why? You know, that's why so many people, they get saved and they don't live right because they don't see the purpose in it. The purpose in it is loving others. You're already in heaven. You, you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? If you accepted Him truly in your heart as Lord of your life, it's not, it's not walking the narrow path so that you can get to heaven. It's walking the narrow path because others need to see your life. And in the narrow path is God's goodness. In the narrow path is God's peace. In the narrow path is joy in the midst of temptation. In the narrow path. What did He say? Many try to take the big broad path and it leads to what? Destruction. You know, a lot of people say, well, yeah, it just takes you right to hell. It's not worse than taking you to hell. It's destruction all the way there. Yeah. You ever seen somebody and their life's just a mess? And, and they're, they're, they're on this big old road, so they're going like this. And, and they're walking down the road. And they're hitting every wall and tripping over every rock. And at the end of that road is worse than the road itself. The road itself stinks. And then the end of it is destruction. And God says, stay on the narrow path. I got one way. Ask me for wisdom. And in every temptation, you will overcome. That's right. In every temptation, I've made a way of escape already. How do, you need, how do you learn the way of escape? Ask for wisdom. And sometimes God will just say, go this way. And you'll say, why? Why? And he'll say, because I said. Any parents ever done that? Your kids said, you said, can we do this? And he said, no. And they said, why? And he said, well, because I said. You know why I said, said that sometimes? Because I really didn't know why I was saying no. <laughs> right? Any parents ever do that? You really, you just know it's not right. So you don't know why you're saying no. Well, that's wisdom. That is wisdom. And it's not time to argue with your child about it. It's time to say, you know, the Spirit of God is telling me this isn't a good thing. And when they get mad and throw a fit, say, man, I'm sorry you don't like me right now, but you will later. Amen. You can't be their best friend sometimes. Right. Sometimes you've got to be a parent. <laughs> Kim always said, I don't want to be the parent today. <laughs> I said, well, that's too bad. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be parents and rejoice in it. <laughs> but that's how God is. <laughs> this is really good. I got to get the CD, man. I didn't... <laughs> that's how God is. God, he t he'll tell you, but He knows. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. He knows, but He's not going to say you need to know. He said, I know exactly why I told you that. Why do you need to know? Do you think I don't love you? Do, you? do you think, you can you not trust me? Will I not come by it honest? 
Wisdom many times is, is trusting God when you don't see His idea. You don't understand it. But you... you <laughs> right? You, you know, like the wise men, man. That they said, we're not going back to Herod. We don't know why, but something ain't right about Herod. They went home a different way. Huh? Some of the things God tells you to do, you reckon, did, did God tell Moses he would split the Red Sea if he, if, he put, if he put his hand over it? No, he just said, do it. Yeah. What if Moses would have said, God, that's not going to help. Can you not see? Egyptians, mean people, <laughs> us, nowhere to go. Guess what? They were in the maze and they had come, they had come across the dead end. Guess what? God will change your maze for you if you come across the dead end because within His wisdom is mercy. Amen. What if Moses said, you know what, God, I can throw my stick in the water and it's not going to help us. You know, I don't, you're going to have to give me some more insight before I... You know, you got people doing that all the time. i got to get more insight. You know, I know that there's stuff going on. And i got to get more insight. That's not patience. Patience is cheerful, hopeful endurance. Patience already has it even without insight. Why does patience think it has it? Because faith asks for it. When, when the blind man said, I'd, I'd like to have my sight... Did Jesus say, well, I'd like to do that for you, but you, don't, you didn't ask right. You, didn't, you haven't done these things right. You, you, know, you, you, should, have done, you should have been here. The, when, when you ask for something from God in faith, He, he immediately gives it to you. What, if, he, if, the, if the blind man would have had worldly wisdom, he'd have said, well, he said, I've been blind forever. You know, just asking Jesus, what good's that? God, you're going to have to tell me why I should ask Jesus before I just go asking Jesus for something. You know, I don't want to bother. He's probably a busy man. I'm not just going to ask him for it, you know, just because uh, you say ask for it. No, that's when you should ask for it. That's wisdom. Amen. There's wisdom in the knowledge of God's love for you. It will cause you to be just like his child and ask for things that you have no reason to get. My daughter has asked me for lots of things that she now has that has no other reason for her to have other than I just like that she has it. People said, did you spoil her? I said, no, I just gave her everything she wanted. <laughs> did God spoil you? No, He just gives you everything you want. Because He loves you. He loves you. This is really good. Whew, I haven't gotten half right there. Where are we at? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Why? Because he'll try every direction but God's before he goes to God's. You've heard it said too many times. I guess we'll just have to pray. Whew, it's come to that. You may even have to ask for wisdom. This may be beyond your wisdom. If it's beyond your foot hitting the floor out of bed, you just got beyond your wisdom. If you took the breath that night when you went to bed, you were beyond your wisdom. You know, doctors think they got figured out and how the how their scientists, how the human body works, and they don't because it's beyond their wisdom. They can't get to the end of how the human body works. Why? Because it's perfect. It is perfect. God did it, and there's nothing else like it. It's perfect. When God gives you wisdom, it's perfect. Hallelujah. There is no other way that will get you to the perfect desired end other than His wisdom. Right. Amen? Amen? And when we ask for it in faith, not wavering, He gives us an answer that always gets us over. It always brings us through and we always come out victorious on the other side. Amen? That's a good thing. And what, but over and over again, he's saying, don't be double-minded. Don't think twice about, about other things. Don't get other ideas in your head. Get rid of this carnal thought. What's he say? He said, I've made the wisdom of man foolishness. 
In other words, it doesn't matter how much wisdom man comes up with, it is foolishness in the sight of God. Why? Because he's got a better way. Right? And, and people say, well, you know, that, that's, people, teenagers still think it. You thought it when you were a teenager. They just don't want me to have any fun. I guess that's what people think about God. He just wants me to do it this way because he's a narrow God with narrow answers. And no, he's a loving God with love answers who wants to get you into the right places at the right time with the right stuff, full of the joy, full of the peace, full of his goodness, and full of everything else that's good and rich in this earth. Amen? Amen? He's a good God. There's nothing narrow about Him except one way. What did they say when Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life? They said, oh, that's narrow. I guess you're the only way. Yes, He is. You know, it's like people don't like it when you say people don't go to hell for sin. They don't go to hell for sin. Right. They go to hell for not receiving redemption from their sin. Right. Jesus Christ. That's not narrow. It's the way. Yes. It is the way. And God has made the way. Thank you, Lord. Where were we? Double-minded man. It says, let the brother in low degree rejoice that he's exalted, but the rich in that he's made low. In other words, wisdom works for everybody. But it works on an equal basis. It exalts the low, it humbles the rich. Why? It's God's wisdom. You ever seen people, they think so because somebody's made a bunch of money that they're wise? Gee, for all they know, they inherited it. And besides that, making money don't make you wise. God's prosperity, He, he don't prosper you until you get His wisdom. Right? You know, the only things I've ever made money doing, I can't explain why I did. So I guess that makes me stupid. I'm just stupid enough to trust God. Right? right? Because His wisdom, and He says, they say, how do you do business? And He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. No, no, God, wait. Well, you probably didn't hear me. Somebody else was talking to you right then, right? <laughs> Here, get, let them finish so I can ask. Because obviously you said, seek ye first when I ask, how do I do good in business? <laughs> and I said, how do I do good in business? And God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. No, no God, no, you don't understand. You, you're, you don't understand. And see, that's double-minded, right? That's what double-minded people do. They act like God didn't understand their question because they got an answer they didn't want. How do I know? Not only did the Bible tell me so. <laughs> Wisdom is proven right by her children, Jesus said. My wisdom was proven where it came from when I used it. Its children were poor. That's good. Right? Yep. Isn't that what Jesus said? He said, wisdom is proven, right, justified by her children. In other words, the fruit that she brings off will show you what kind of wisdom you used. Huh? You know, you got people all the time saying, I did this and I did that. And I did this, and I did everything, and I followed the Word, and I did this, and it still isn't working. Uh, maybe you should look at God's wisdom. Right? Because I quoted all the prosperity verses for seven to ten years. Every one of them. I had them all. Man, the prosperity verses, God will love it all, wish above all things. He, he takes pleasure in my prosperity. Man, I'd quote those. But when I started quoting, Seek ye first. Why? Because that's God's wisdom. Yes. And God had a way to get me out, and it was seek Him first. Quit seeking the prosperity. Quit seeking the healing. Quit seeking... Seek me. In me is all the answers. Amen? That's what God wants. And yeah, it was real narrow. It was one verse. Instead of the 80 that I had. The 80 I had wouldn't work without the one. Amen? God's so good to us. Man, I'm going to have to get the CD so I can preach it again next service. Because <laughs> Rich or poor, doesn't matter. We need God's wisdom. It's not your wisdom. 
It's God's wisdom you need. If you're poor, you need God's wisdom to exalt you. If you're rich, you need God's wisdom to bring you down because you're trusting in yourself. What's he saying? He said, doesn't matter how rich you are, you're like a flower of the field. Your money will not keep you from being gone someday. And when you are, if you didn't use my wisdom here on the earth, where you're gone ain't going to be good. He's not telling people to be rich. God wants people rich. He wants humble rich people. Right? People who know, like Abraham, when he said, let me give you, the king said, let me give you. And he said, no. He said, let it be said that no man made me rich, but God made me rich. Amen? But yet he was rich. He just didn't talk about it all the time. He didn't go into places and say, um, apparently you didn't know I'm Abraham and I, I got more cows than I can fit on my land out here. Uh, maybe you better start asking me the questions instead of me asking you because I'm Abraham. I got big bucks. I've been places. Friend, oh God. <laughs> That's why rich people don't get, they don't get it. Why? Because you can't be puffed up and walk in love. And God's way, the way of wisdom, is a love way. And you can't be above people and love them. <laughs> See, that's not in here. Wow. <laughs> Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man... What? He's back on this temptation thing. Why? Because everything he told you was your way out. Everything he said from verse 1 to verse now is your way out of temptation. He says, blessed is the man. What? Prosperous, empowered to succeed, is the man that endures temptation for when he's tried. What, what did it talk about being tried? The trial of your faith. What? It, it works patience. Yeah. Yep. And then you ask for wisdom. And when you ask for wisdom, you overcome temptation and you receive the crown of life, which the Lord's promised for who? The ones that love Him. Why the ones that love Him? Because the ones that love Him are the ones that follow Him, the ones that listen to Him, the ones that are not double-minded. Why? If you love somebody, love always what? Trusts. So if you love the Lord, you always trust Him. Yes. He's got the right way. Even if it makes no sense to you, His wisdom is perfect. It is perfect. And it never misses. You can trust in His love for you. Therefore, you can love Him. And how do you love Him? By doing what He says. What did He say? Ask me for wisdom. I'll give it to you. Let faith and patience have their perfect work. And you will be entire and perfect and want nothing. How many like wanting nothing? In other words, when you say, I'd like to have... Oh, <laughs> I got it already. You know, it'd really be nice to... No, there it is. Every... <laughs> That's wanting nothing. You know the first things you won't want? Peace. Joy. Love. Those are the first things you won't want. Kindness. You won't want for it. You'll have so much of it, it'll be oozing out of you. Because those are the things you have to have first before prosperity can even work its way in. Because that's true prosperity. True prosperity is having the goodness of God in you and then the outer will come. But you got to have the goodness in you first. And the goodness of God is not how much money is in your wallet. The goodness of God is how much peace is in your heart. How much joy is in your life. The goodness of God is not measured by what's, what you have in your house. You could find somebody that has very little, but man, they got the peace of God. There's somebody who could have a lot. There's somebody that could have a lot. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. It's a good dinner. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Temptation. Did we talk about how we don't like that? Did you know that it's listed in the book of Hebrews? <laughs> I was looking it up last night. Being tempted is listed, listed in with being sawn in two. 
Now, how many would rather be tempted? <laughs> tempted, sawn in two. Want the ones that want to be sawn in two down here, tempted over here. There ain't going to be nobody over here. But it's listed in the same category of those who overcame by faith as the ones that overcame that were sawn in two, that were killed by the sword, that were scourged, that were beaten. It's listed in the book of Hebrews with all those. It says they were sawn, sawn asunder and tempted. Tempted. Tempted, please. Go with tempted for me. Why? Why? <laughs> You know, because I'm carnal, I don't want to be sawn in two. <laughs> but how many know temptation is a lot worse than being sawn in two? Because if you fail at temptation, you've got to keep going over and over. It's a spiritual thing. They can't saw your spirit in two. They can't, they can't, they can't hurt. They can do whatever they want to to your body, and it does not hurt you. But if temptation overtakes you, you're in trouble. But good news, with every temptation, God's already made a way out. No temptation can overtake you. It, Jesus has already overcome them and made a way of escape. He's a good God and we have a good way. We have a glorious Savior. Amen? And it says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them who love him. And if you keep going in James down to chapter 3, turn over to chapter 3, he starts talking about double-mindedness again. People say, no, he talks about the tongue in chapter 3. Yeah, the tongue is controlled by the mind, you know that? By the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it says, no man can tame the tongue. And then what's he start talking? He starts talking about bitter water and sweet water. What's he saying? Two visions. Two visions. God's got one vision. He wants your mouth to speak His vision. Not two visions. Two visions is what? Division. It's more than one vision. It's division. God's not a divisive God. He is a reconciling God. He brings things together and restores them. He doesn't split them up. Guess what? The denomination's not His idea. People say, well, everybody needs a church they can feel comfortable in. Denominations, not God's idea. The very word means separate nations. Right. Yeah, people all the time, I can't go to that church. They just don't believe like me. Maybe you're not supposed to go because they believe like you. Maybe you're supposed to go because that's where God wants you. And wisdom would say go there even when you don't understand it. <laughs> I remember when he told me and Kim, he said, uh, come out of this church, and we were happy in that church. It was very, you know, sitting down, listening, praising God, didn't have to do anything. Put the kid in the nursery. <laughs> it's quite nice. <laughs> do nothing, church. <laughs> Sit and soak and be fed. He said, Go to this church. We're like, God, why? They don't believe anything we believe. In fact, is God said, They believe everything you believe. Or he said, They believe the same as you believe, they just don't believe everything you believe. They believe Jesus Christ is Lord. They believe for the salvation through the blood. They believe in lots of things you believe. They just don't believe as far as you believe. And he said, I said, go. We went. And I wouldn't trade those 10 years or whatever for all the gold in the world. Because the relationships I made, the, the, the servant heart that I received the things that God gave me and that I was able to give and the people's lives that I, there's people in this church that I was able to teach to that found out about the goodness of God that never knew it. Thank God I went where he said, even though I didn't understand. Because double-minded men are unstable in all their ways. They'll go their own way and they'll miss out on somebody else. We can't miss out on the blessing of God. The blessing of God is who you love. It's not what you have. You'll have plenty because you're blessed. But the blessing is ministering to other people. Loving your brothers. Loving people outside of the church. The love of God that other people can't do, you get to do. Everyone can be rich. Anyone 
that really wants to get and have some gumption can have money. <laughs> I know y'all don't believe that, but it's true. Well, I never had a leg up. Well, and as long as you talk like that, bitter water, sweet water, I don't know. But not everyone can love people. Only people that have the love of God in them can love people. We're called to a higher level. We're called to a much higher level than just being rich. People say, are you a rich man? I say, better than that. <laughs> Not only am I a rich man, I have the love of God. Amen. I can pray beyond any faults. I can forgive no matter what happens to me. I can love in situations where other people can't. I can walk in and bring peace and joy where there was none. Am I rich? I reckon so. Amen. Glory to God. And I got the nice stuff with it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Verse, James 3, verse 12 says, Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, berries? Either a vine... <laughs> Boy, that King James. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? Either a vine, figs. So can a fountain both yield salt water and fresh water? What's he talking about again? Double-mindedness. He's talking about doing things more than one way. It can't be. God's saying, I set things up this way for a purpose. This is the way to go. Right? What, what, what's it saying? What is it? Isaiah 30 says, this is the way. Walk ye in it. And but those verses before that talk about bread of affliction and, and stuff like that. And you're like, whew, do I have to walk ye in that? What's he saying? He said, it doesn't matter. It's the way. And if it's the way, it'll be a good way. And it's my wisdom. And if you'll go that way, you'll understand. <laughs> Not, don't be double-minded. And then he says, who is a wise man? What's he talking? Who is a wise man? Who's the one that has wisdom in him? He's the one that has good conversation. He's the one, the one that's wise and endued with knowledge among you. Let him show it out of his good conversation and his works with what? Meekness of wisdom. In other words, your mouth will show whose wisdom you're walking in. And it, you can't be talking this way and believing this way. That's why God said, let him ask in faith. Because if you're asking in faith, you won't be talking this way and believing this way. What? You'll be on the narrow path. And as you're on the narrow path, you'll be receiving those things that God has for you. What did God, Jesus say in uh, Matthew 6, 22? I don't have it, so you'll have to. The light of the body is the eye, and therefore, if therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full, full of light. What's he saying? If you only look one way, you'll have all my light. If you only have one vision, remember what he says later in these verses we're reading, where there's envying and strife, what's he saying? More than one vision. In other words, you've got my way and God's way. More than one vision. He's saying where there's envying and strife, there's confusion. Why? Because there's more than one way. How many know when you come up to a why, that's confusing when there's more than one way. If you immediately know right is right, you go right. Right? If your eye is single, if you only see things through godly wisdom, if your eye is single, your whole body shall be full of light. Verse 23, but if your eye be evil, if it's, if it's single and it's good, then what would evil be? <laughs> More than single. <laughs> he probably didn't even put a, put a double on there because it's probably triple, quadruple, whatever comes after that. Lots. If your eye be evil, then the whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light you have is darkness, how great is going to be that darkness? In other words, if what you believe is really darkness, but you believe it with all your heart, how dark is that darkness? Whew! That's dark. Verse 24. Oh, we must have switched gears. He was talking about single eyes and, and evil eyes, and now, now he's talking about two masters. What, what's that all about? can't have two masters. We cannot serve two masters. Speaking out of one side of your mouth and the other is serving two. And, and, and how many people say, well, I would never hate God. 
people do hate him. And not hate him in the sense that they hate him, but they blame him because they're double visioned and they're not getting what they think they ought to have from him and they're blaming him. That's double minded with two masters and you'll despise one and you'll love the other. How many want to love the carnal wisdom? Huh? <laughs> I don't. We better close. We better close. There's two kinds of wisdom, isn't there? Verse 15. James 3.15, 3.14, he's talking about bitter envy and strife. Basically, you could say selfish wisdom, wisdom that is motivated to help itself. That's selfish wisdom. He said that wisdom d does not descend from above, but is earthly, requires your senses. In other words, it only helps you because it makes you feel good. Right? <laughs> Just because it makes you feel good don't mean it's helping you. That's right? right? Okay. That's why drugs and alcohol and things like that are so prevalent because they make you feel good for a moment. Are they helping you? Trust me, I've done them, and they don't. <gasps> Dave, you've done Yes, I've done them, and they don't. <laughs> Verse 16, where envying and strife is, there's confusion and e every evil work. What's he talking about still? Wisdom. He's talking about devilish wisdom. Where devilish wisdom is, there's envy and strife and confusion in every evil work. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above, God's wisdom. Here's, here's the wisdom we have. Everybody want some of this wisdom? You know, if you'll notice, some of these look like, look like a love, don't they? You know, this, this looks like they could have pasted it right there in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, the wisdom that's from above is, first of all, it's pure. Its motives are not about itself. It's pure. It has pure motives. In other words, godly motives are motives to help you, not because God wants it to w this way. God doesn't say, well, I just don't have time to deal with you today. Here, have it. You want a cookie? You want a cookie? You've been saying you want a cookie. Dad, I want a cookie. I want a cookie. I want a cookie. Here, have it and leave me alone. God will never give you something for that, that way. Right? His motives are pure. He's there to help you. He, everything He wants to get you to is a good thing. And first they're pure, then they're peaceable. 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 Whole. Whole. Perfect. Peaceable. Set at one again. Do you know what that, what that word peace means? Set at one again. In other words, godly wisdom will only take you one direction and it'll set you back on the one direction path you want the you want the goodness of god have this kind of wisdom it's gentle it's gentle that's a love word that's it, in other words it's easy to be around and it's never going to be hard on you amen and then it says it's easy being treated of course it's easy to be around full of what mercy mercy what it doesn't judge you he didn't give you you know a lot of people say i got this wisdom so i could judge no you got that wisdom so you couldn't <laughs> Godly wisdom helps us not to judge. How many know carnal wisdom is what we work in all the time and we judge all the time? I don't like that. I can't believe they did that. You know, a wise person wouldn't do that. A wise person wouldn't say that they wouldn't do that. <laughs> Full of mercy and good fruits. No respecter of persons just like its father and without hypocrisy. This is us right here, isn't it? Is this you? Amen. Is this a picture of you? Is this the kind of wisdom not only that you have, but that you follow? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. It's kind of tough when you run out of time, especially when I didn't know how much time it would take to start with because I didn't have any of that. <laughs> Glory to God. He's a good God. How many know there's a wisdom and a way, and it's only one way? We'll call it a one-way wisdom. It's God's way, and, and it's in all of us, and He'll give you more as you need it. It said Jesus in, in Luke, it said Jesus was filled with wisdom in one verse, and then later it says He increased in wisdom. You reckon if Jesus needed wisdom, we might need some? Glory to God. And we have it right here. Right here. And we have a direct line where we can get more all the time. And, it, and, and not only can you get it, it's free and they'll give you too much. Glory to God. You got a song?